Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So this is going to be question 4 in the May 2023 time zone 2 paper 2. So here we're given an electrically heated pad. We're given that the total length is 1.5 meters and that we have a resistance of 4.2 ohms. And then they are, we are told that when there's a current in the resistor, the temperature changes from 20 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees. And so first we need to calculate the current in the resistor given that we transfer 15 joules of energy per second. So first of all, this energy per second, energy over second is just the power. So power is defined as the change in energy over the change in time. So if we transfer 15 joules every second, then we have a power output of 15 watts. And then we just need to calculate the current, which we, which we can do with this formula in the data booklet. We just need to rearrange and then plug in the values. And then we will find that I is equal to P over R under the square root. And then this will be square root of 15 over 4.2 which is uh, 1.9 amps. So this is how much current we will have in, in this resistor. And then we are told that they want to make this from carbon fiber and that the variation of the resistivity of this carbon fiber with temperature is shown here. And uh, we are told the cross-sectional area of our uh, wire and we need to show that this carbon fiber will indeed work as a choice of material here. So first of all, we need to see that our operating temperature is between 10 and 20 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius. So first of all, we need to convert these to Kelvin. So we convert Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273 to them. So this will be 293 Kelvin. And if we take 35 degrees Celsius, that will be three, 308 Kelvin. So these are our temperatures that our resistor is operating in between. So if we see that's like somewhere around here, like somewhere in this region, it's always going to be in this region. And then, well, we can calculate the resistivity of our material that it should be, as we know the resistance of it. We know the cross-sectional area of it, and we know the length of it, which was 1.25 meters, as we were told at the beginning of the question. So if we use the formula from the data booklet, R is equal to PL over A, where this P is the resistivity of the wire, L is the length, and A is the cross-sectional area. So this we can simply rearrange for the resistivity, which will just be RA over L and then we just have to plug in the values so this will be 9.6 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1.25 meters obviously here everything is in good units so we don't need to convert anything and then we find that the resistivity in this case is going to be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 ohm meters so we see from the graph now what is actually the, the resistivity at our working temperatures. So if we draw this line approximately here, then uh, what we see is that, well, maybe I can draw it a bit more precise, something like this. Then we first of all have to see what the scaling on the axes are. So we see that in a block of five, we go two units up. So that must mean that halfway is going to be one, three, and so on. So here we see that we are somewhere around three, 3.0, 3.1, somewhere around there. Depends how accurately we draw our, uh, our uh, line here. Obviously mine isn't so accurate, but it should be around like 3.1, 3.2. And then so we see from the graph that the required resistivity here matches the value given on the graph, so it will be suitable. So required 
resistivity matches value given on graph between our working temperatures so it will be suitable and then we are told that the power supply has a negligible internal resistance and we need to state and explain the variation in the current in the resistor as the temperature of the pad increases so if the temperature increases the first thing we need to observe is that if we go back to this graph we just used if the temperature is going to increase well then our resistivity is going to decrease right because then because the graph is continuously going down so it's going, the resistivity is definitely going to decrease with the increasing temperature so from this it follows that the resistivity is decreasing and well if we look at the equation that we just used again from the data booklet that r is equal to pl over a then uh, we see that if our resistivity is decreasing then our resistance must also decrease so r also decreases as in the formula l and a are just constants that don't change with temperature so if the right side with resistivity is decreasing then the left side must also decrease and then we look at the formula that we know that the voltage is equal to current times the resistance and well we know that uh, the voltage is constant right because our uh, source is the same so we're not changing the potential across our uh, resistor our heating element so that must remain the same and so if r is decreasing here and if uh, the product of current and resistance here is constant then the current must increase so that if the resistor decreases the resistance decreases then they still uh, produce the same product when, when we multiply them together and so the current will increase like this so the final answer is that with the increasing temperature we will have an increasing current yes and then we are told that when there is a current in the resistor magnetic forces act between the resistor strips and then for the part labeled rs outline the magnetic force acting on it due to the current in pq so we have to look back over here so this is rs that's all we need to look at and then we need, look, we need to look at the force acting on this due to this pq wire so first of all we need to decide which way does the current flow here it doesn't really matter let's just assume that the current flows this way across the uh, the component so if it flows this way then this piece of wire flows this way this way just goes in a loop like this like this like this like this and so what's really important here is that we see that the currents are in opposite directions right so in RS and QP, uh, the currents are in opposite direction. And we only need to outline the magnetic force, so we don't really need to write down our reasoning. But uh, we should know that when we have opposite parallel currents next to each other, which travel in opposite directions, then we will have a repulsive force between them. This you can... Uh, C because if you use your right hand rule so if we for example look at R R S, then you have to place your thumb in the direction that the current is flowing in rs so upwards and then you see the way your fingers curl you see that they curl kind of like over your palm and to the right and so in the place of qs the magnetic field will be pointing out of the page because your thumbs at the position of qp point out of the page so we label that with symbols like this and then we use the other right hand rule where you use your three fingers for the current magnetic field and the magnetic force so if you place your thumb in the direction of the current your finger in the direction of the 
magnetic field, so out of the page, then your middle finger will point in the direction of the force, which in this case should be pointing to the left, if you did everything correctly, which means that this is a repulsive force. So that's why we're going to have a repulsive force here. And then just as a side note, you should probably also know this reasoning for when the uh, currents are parallel and traveling in the same direction. In that case, the forces will be attractive. And you can deduce it in the exact same way as here. First, you need to do, uh, see which way the magnetic field points at the position of one of the wires, and then use the other right hand rule to see which way the force points. So yeah. And then we're still looking at the resistance of RS, the resistor labeled RS. And we need to state and explain the net magnetic force acting on it due to the currents in PQ and TU. So now we need to consider uh, both forces. And so, well, since there, since uh, both TU and PQ travel in opposite directions compared to RS, both will um, exert a repulsive force. So both. P, Q, and T, U produce a repulsive force on R, S. P, Q we just saw in the previous part, and uh, T, U is the exact same, just on the other side. And uh, this repulsive force is the same magnitude as the distance between the wires is five centimeters, it's a constant, so that doesn't affect it here. And so since this, these magnetic forces are equal and in opposite directions, the net magnetic force will be zero as they cancel each other out. Force is zero. So one points to the left, other points to the right, same, same magnitude, so they simply cancel each other out here. And in the last part of this question, we are told that the design of the pad encloses the resistor in a material that traps the air. And so, and the resistor is also close to the surface of the pad, to the top. We need to explain with reference to thermal energy transfer, why the pad is designed in this way. Well, the first thing we need to notice is that they use air. And the thing we need to know about air is that it's a poor conductor of heat. Conductor of heat. So what this means is that this air kind of traps the heat within this compartment. So doesn't really allow the heat to escape the system here. So if it doesn't allow the uh, heat to leave, then it means that the heat stored within this uh, pad is always increasing. So it doesn't lose heat so quickly. It can retain this increased temperature for a longer period of time. And so this is why, this is why we have air and that's why we have it like this. And pretty much the reason why the pad is at the top is because in this way we can have some air circulation over here with uh, convection. So convection is just this uh, ener thermal energy transfer where the air at the top is getting heated up and then it's, get it's always getting replaced by colder air and it goes in a loop like this. And it's always always the cold air that is close to the surface and then it goes in a loop like this where the, heat o the air always heats itself up. That's how like radiators work in a house, for example, as well. And they um, radiate heat through convection. Well, it doesn't radiate heat. It only uses convection. It radiates very little heat. So, um, yeah, so through convection. And well, usually when a question asks us, like with reference to thermal energy transfer, we generally want to mention if it's conduction, convection or radiation. And well, here we don't have really any radiation for that the temperature of these things would have to be much larger. And well, conduction 
that's going to be kind of of importance here is because which is because the resistor is close to the top so it's close to this cat and so it will be more it will be able to more efficiently transfer the heat to the top of the pad since it's so close and so there's going to be less uh, air loss so like there's going to be less air up here so like and we know that air is a poor conductor of heat so we don't want like a lot of air up here as that would stop the cat from warming up so that's why we have the resistor up there so it's at the top because like this energy will be emitted uh, quicker and so that's pretty much the reasoning in this question so this was the end of question four i hope it was uh, helpful and see you in the next one